IPv6 address types. Now in this section we will continue with our IPv6 where we will see the different categories of addresses we have in IP version 6. Like in IP version 4 we have a categories of A class, B class, C class and then class D and class E where we use class ABC for LAN and the WAN purpose whereas the class D is either for multicasting and the class E is for R&D something like that and then we also have a category of private IP addresses which can be used within your organization but are not recognized on the internet and similar way we have a public IP addresses which can be globally unique addresses which are used to go to send your traffic on the internet a public network so now similar way here also we have we got a categories but we don't have any classes like that we just have three categories of addresses we have something called unicast address which is a normal ipv6 address which can be assigned to any device in the network let's say i have a i have some address like in ip version 4 we have some address called 192.168.1.1 now i can assign this ip ip address to any of the device it can be a computer or it can be a router or it can be any device like a firewall now any address which you can assign to any of the networking device we call that address as a unicast address one to one so a multicast address is more like a class d address which can be used for multicasting services and then we don't have in broadcast here there is no concept of broadcast here in ip version 6 so the broadcast address is removed from ip version 6 instead we have something called anycast now anycast is totally different from broadcast or multicast we'll we'll see that in detail in in our next topics so the first thing we'll start up with the category of unicast okay now when it comes to unicast inside your unicast addresses we got three categories of addresses the first category is global unicast address and the second one is unique local address and the third category is link local address now the basic differences between these three kinds of addresses is the first one if you if you say global unicast address it is more like your public ip address now if you remember public IP, public IP is a globally unique IP address like or IPv6 address which can be assigned to any, any device in the network and which can be recognized on the internet and it's a globally unique address. So which means this is more like your public IP. Now similar way we have a unique local address which is more like your private IP addresses. So unique local. So first let us get into more in detail about the global unique address. So it's more like a public IP, just now I said that, and it is routable. Now when you say routable, which means, now if I assign any IPv6 address here, let's say I'm assigning some address, some address, let's say 2001, whatever the address, 2001 colon colon one. Now this address will be advertised when you are using some routing. So the, this router is going to carry this network information to a different, a different router. That's what we call as routable. Now, these both the addresses are anywhere routable addresses. Now, how to identify? The next thing, how to identify whether it is a global unicast address or a unique local address. Now, any address whichever starts with 2000 zeros, 2000 colon colon slash 3. So, which means slash 3 represents the first three bits will always be constant 001, which is assigned by INAM. So, let, let me get into more in detail on this. Now, when I say 2000, 2001 let's take an example here what is the what is the address which we are discussing we are discussing about global unicast and global unicast is more like a public ip address which is routable and any address whichever starts with 2000 colon colon slash 3 now the meaning of slash 3 means if you see here if you remember we discussed that the first each number is going to represent how many bits four bits and the complete portion is going to represent how many bits it will be 16 bits right so which means out of this four bits if you write this four bits eight four two one if you write them in binary now how to write binary value of two what's the binary value of two if is if you write here the binary value of two will be writing one here and all the remaining will be zeros now which means this is your first number and in that first number, the first three bits will be fixed or we can say constant. 
So in in my scenario, the first three bits means these are the first three bits. It will not change. Now, if I write the another possible value, I can write zero zero one because I cannot change the zero zero one. And if I write it as one, because in binary either I can write zero or I can write one, which means all the remaining bits I can change except the first three bits. So which means if you write this equivalent decimal uh, hexadecimal value, what's the equivalent decimal hexadecimal value is? Two and what's the equivalent hexadecimal value of this? Two plus one. How much? It's three. Now, which means in simple any address whichever starts with two or three in the first portion, you have to understand that these addresses are your global unique addresses. So this is something defined by Aina. It's a standard, which means now we are using two thousand. Probably once we finish this two thousand allocation, we we might use two thousand one. And then 2002, like that. Once you finish this complete two block, probably we may start up with three also. Now, so this is something what is defined by now. So in short, I can say that any address whichever starts with two in the first portion or three in the first portion, we need to understand that it is a global unique address. That is what this slash three represents. The first three bits will be always constant. The next thing. Is okay. So this is the way we need to identify. So in short, we can say global unique address, whichever starts with two or three in the first first number. First number, if it is two or three, whatever it is. Now the second category is your unique local address. Now when we say unique local address, it's more like your private IP, which is also routable. And as for the INA, they decided that it's FC zero zero colon colon slash seven. So which means the first seven bits will be constant, and they are not routable on the global internet. Which means you know the private IP addresses cannot be recognized on the internet, and any address whichever starts with FC or FD. Now why I'm saying FC FD because if I get back to the same calculation here, the same method. Now as per our unique local address FC zero zero colon colon slash seven, right? So if I'm going to write this. This first number represents four bits, and the second number also represents four bits. So if I'm going to write the binary value of f, f represents fifteen, and c represents uh, a is ten, b c, a b c, ten, eleven, twelve. So which means c is going to represent twelve. So if I'm going to write binary value of f c, it will be eight four two one. So fifteen means eight plus four twelve, twelve plus four fourteen, fourteen plus one fifteen. And similar way, if I write C value, it will be eight plus four, twelve, and remaining will be zeros. So this is the equivalent binary value of FC, right? Now in this, the seven first seven bits will be exactly constant, which means I cannot change the first seven bits. The first seven bits will remain the same one 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 and one one zero. And if I have to change, I can only change the last number. That is, either it will be zero, or it will be one. So, which means if you write the equivalent value of this, so what will be the equivalent value? It will be FC or FD because one number increments. Eight plus four, twelve. Twelve plus one, thirteen. So D is equal to thirteen. So any number, whenever you see any IPv6 address whichever starts with FC or FD, we need to understand it is a, it is your unique local address. So that's what I mentioned here in this point. Starts with either FC or FD in the first two numbers. Now then, there is a third category of address. We have something called link local address. Now this link local address is the default IPv6 address present on every IPv6 enabled interface. Which means, let's take an example. On my router, I have an interface called F0 by 0, and on this interface, I have assigned one IPv6 address which starts with 2001 some address. Now even though you assign this address, it will be having this interface IP along with It will have one more IPv6 address on this interface, and that is going to start with FE80, and the remaining part will be the MAC address. Now this address will be your link local address. Now this link local address is the default address present on every IPv6 enabled interface, but it is non-routable. Now when I say non-routable means this address is only recognized within the LAN. It is not recognized in the WAN. Remember that. Okay, 
So, and I'll show you when I, when I get into the lab, probably I can show you these address by verifying show IPv6 interface brief, we can also verify these address. But the routers do not forward the packets with this link, specific link local address. Now, similar way, the next we need to understand is a multicast. Now, in case of multicast, is the multicast address is more similar to your class D address. You know, if you want to host any any specific set of multicast services, then we need to use a multicast address. Now, here as per the INA, they reserved anything starting with FF. You can see slash eight. So when we say slash eight means the first four bits and the first four bits will be always constant. So which means any address, whenever you see any address, whichever starts with FF in the first two characters, you need to understand it is a address reserved for multicasting. Now, finally, there is one more kind of address. We have something called anycast. Now this anycast address is more similar to your multicast address. Like here, I, I wrote one definition here, similar to multicast which is going to identify the multiple interfaces, but sends to only one, whichever it finds first. Now, this anycast address is more commonly used in scenarios where you implement some uh, multiple gateways acting as a single gateway, or let me take an example here. Now to understand anycast, if I take an example, um, I'm sitting here in my, this is my computer and I'm trying to access yahoo.com let's say yahoo.com that is my server that is some server on the internet i'm trying to access now your request reaches the isp because i'm connected to isp and then from there the your request reaches the internet and from the internet again it is going to reach a selected yahoo server or whatever the ip because there is a dns server which will resolve this name into our respective ip addresses but the question is do you think there is only one yahoo server on the internet which is going to reply for all the users in the world. So there's no a single Yahoo server. Now you will be having, so most of the public servers, you have a multiple servers actually act as a single server. Now, which means you have one Yahoo server somewhere, maybe in, in a different location in India here, and you have another Yahoo server in US, probably you may have one more Yahoo server on Dubai and some, some locations, XYZ and ABC locations. Now all these servers are actually connected to each other and they are going to maintain the same copy of the information. But finally, all these servers are grouped together and referred to as a cluster. Now in advanced server concepts, generally we, we call this concept as a clusters where a group of servers are acting as a single server. And then we assign one IP address to the cluster. Generally we call it as a, a virtual IP address now the similar kind, same kind of concept also applies for HSRP, VRRP concepts uh, if you're doing some gateway gateway type of things. Now cluster IP, and we are going to assign one separate public IP address for this address, and each and every device will have a different IP address. So when you're requesting a yahoo.com, which means it is going to resolve with this IP, which means it is going to identify multiple interfaces, which means when you are sending anything to this IP, it, it actually meant for any one of these devices within the group, now, which means any one of the device is going to reply to your request. Now, if that nearest server is not responding or it's not reachable, in that case, the request will be forwarded to the next nearest server. Now, to implement this kind of configurations or this kind of things, in IPv6, they have introduced one kind of address called AnyCast address. Now, the main advantage of using the AnyCast address in IPv6 when you compare with IP version four previously, in IP version four, the major drawback is we need to have each and every device because you know the, all these servers are acting as one single server, but the major drawback is we need to have a separate IP address must be assigned to each and every device. And then all these devices, you cannot use the same IP and all these devices are grouped together and referred with one common virtual IP address. Now, when you say virtual means there is no physical device with that IP address. Now, in case of IPv6, what we can do is we can assign, let's say take an example. These are all the devices acting as a single server. Now, what I can do is I can assign the same IPv6 address to each and every device. So I'm going to say 2001 colon 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 one, 2001 colon colon one, 2001 colon 
2001 colon colon 1 and 2001 colon colon 1. Now what I can do is I can configure the same IPv6 address for all the devices in that group but the condition is I need to configure it as any cache. So which means you don't need to assign a separate IP, IP address for each and every device and then refer it as a virtual IP. Now whenever you do this automatically the request when it comes it comes for 2001 and it is not going to create any conflict because we are going to say as any cast so whenever you say as any cast the device will going to understand that there are some other devices in the network which are also using the same ipv6 address so it will not create any conflict and at the same time if anyone is requesting for 2111 the your request will be forwarded to the nearest possible server and if that server is not going to respond, it will be forwarded to the next nearest possible server. Now to implement this kind of this kind of configurations, you have an address called AnyCast, which was introduced in IP version 6. Now what what is the category or what is the range of these addresses? There is no separate range, whatever the existing global unicast addresses, whatever we have seen, if you remember, we have seen some global unicast addresses and unique local addresses whatever we have seen in the previous category these addresses can be used as any cache addresses now the only thing we need to do is we just need to configure the ipv6 address and with a keyword called any cast in the end so when you define something like this it's going to understand that if, if you're doing it on the router probably the router will understand that there is another device with the same ipv6 address and both are having the same ipv6 address and it will not generate any conflict and they will they, they they simply understand that they are a part of the same group and they are doing the same kind of job or holding the same kind of information